Greetings and salutations, humans of Earth. It's Red Wild Rider, this time not live. Uh, I am pre-recording this video and uh, going to try my, uh, do a little practice on my editing skills. Uh, which uh, you may have seen in one of my previous videos is uh, rather rudimentary, but, you know, uh, I'm learning. I'm learning. New to the whole thing, you know. Gotta, gotta try some new stuff. So anyway, I got uh, my second box of Icoria right here, waiting for you, and uh, we're about to open this sucker now. So uh, let's uh, pop that sucker, and let's get right down to business. Hope everybody's been doing okay. Thank you for joining me here. And uh, yeah, it's going to be another Icoria video. Uh, the last one went pretty well, I thought. Uh, I wish I opened one or two more Mythics, but you know, uh, it is what it is. Ah. All right. Got our box topper. We'll just, uh, slap it right down there. We'll open that sucker later. And let's get out our 36 lovely, lovely packs of cardboard. Some of them shiny pieces of cardboard uh, with some uh, really cool artwork and stuff like that. So here we go. Woo! <laughs> that hit me right in the head. <laughs> Anyway, let's let's just get right down to business and start cracking some packs. And I'm going to remember that we have pull tabs uh, this time for the whole video instead of just the last uh, couple of packs. So yeah, so uh, so far I'm uh, I'm liking the set. I really love the uh, cartoony artwork. It's uh, pretty neat. And we have our token. We have our blossoming sands. And let's see what loveliness is in the first pack. It is a crystalline giant. I did not open this in the first box. So. Uh, very good. Happy to uh, have this guy, at least one copy. He's not bad. Gets a lot of different ability word tokens, which is uh, always good. And uh, eh, other than that, nothing too special. Okay, let's uh, check to see if we have any of our alternate art cards, which we do not in there. I believe there's, uh, I, I don't know if they're calling them showcases uh, this time around. I think they're just uh, different art. Um, but whatever, if they're showcases, so be it. I mean, not like that really matters all that much. So, uh, we have our dinosaur token. Let's see what else we got here. Island, behind the island, it is a whirlwind of thought. And I opened this in the last box. I made a comment about, uh, how awesome this will be in, um, in the Pramicon deck I've been working on. Uh, anytime we test a non-creature spell, draw a card, I mean... Well, it's just, you know, more Narsa shenanigans, which is uh, perfectly okay. Okay, uh, anything in there? Nothing uh, fancy looking. And any fancy looking in here? Nope, nope, nothing. Just some commons. All right, pack number three. Uh, I'm hoping to open a couple more triomes. I think I opened three in the last box. I haven't uh, taken stock yet because I'm going to uh, do all that after I open this box. And so I'm going to try to... Uh, have a, a one day or so turnover in terms of uh, recording videos and then editing them and getting them onto YouTube. Riel the Everwise, yes, I was hoping I pulled one of these. Our first mythic, uh, she gets uh, plus one plus zero for each incident sorcery card in your graveyard. And uh, whenever you discard one more card for the first time each turn, you're going to draw that many cards. That seems really fun. And uh, my... Uh, EDH playgroup and I were just talking earlier and we're you know doing another deck challenge and this time we're going to uh, you know build inexpensive deck well relatively inexpensive decks around the uh, C20 commanders and uh, you know we rolled to uh, see who got to pick first I got to pick second and I took uh, Gavi of course right away by the way Cloud Piercer very nice uh, got him in the last pack uh, in the last box um, so yeah so I, t I took Gavi and uh, I probably will be playing Riel on that deck. Uh, hopefully I can keep it under budget. <laughs> Budget's $200, so I don't think there'll be a problem with that. All right. I gotta find a better place to put the pail that I'm throwing all my empty wrappers into. Yeah, all right, over there seems good. Okay, so uh, garbage card. Another garbage card. Ah, oh, yeah, right away into the full art triome. Oh, that's so beautiful. That's so nice. I love those. They're so, so pretty. Nice. Put it up there with the uh, Mythics because that's how 
uh, how much I really like them. They're really nice, and I hope I get a, a full set of them. I think I will. I'm going to be opening um, a collector's box uh, probably later in the week. Um, so uh, stay tuned for that video because, uh, I mean, the collector's boxes, if you've seen any collector's boxes opened, you know that they're pretty brolic. So, all right, let's find our mountain and behind our foil Patagia Tiger, which, by the way, you know, very funny about this card. Um, I, I was saying to myself, I said, Patagia, I said, we haven't seen that uh, anywhere uh, in the set other than this one card. Because, you know, you think maybe it relates to a location or something. And then I realized, that I, I'm pretty sure that uh, there's like a Patagia Viper and was from Ravnica. And now I'm really curious as to uh, what the heck Patagia means. So uh, if anybody has any idea, you can uh, certainly leave a comment and let me know because I have no freaking clue. <laughs> All right. So uh, behind that is uh, another Death's Oasis. That makes number three for me so far. Hurrah. I'll try to contain my excitement. Uh, but um, yeah, when, when the first time I saw that card, I was uh, the first thing I said was, I, I know I've seen it before. Where have I seen it before? And then I realized, I was like, oh, it's Patagia Viper from... Uh, but, but it's funny because this has absolutely no relationship to Patagia Viper, which makes me even more curious as to exactly how uh, that ended up working out. Uh, I'm not really sure. Like I said, if uh, somebody has an explanation, please, please, please do not hesitate to uh, contact me and let me know what the deal is with that. Because that is confusing. Behind the Jungle Hollow, we have uh, Kahira. And I'm pretty sure that I opened Kahira in the last box, so uh, wonderful duplication. I think I only opened like four companions, I think. I opened uh, Lutri, Orion. I know I didn't open Lurus, because I would have remembered. Uh, I know I talked about him, but I didn't open him. Um, uh, Karuga, and one of the other ones I'm forgetting. Boneyard Lurker, got one of those. Uh, very nice, very nice artwork. It's a Nightmare Beast. Very cool, very cool. Okay, so that goes there. Proud Wild Bonder goes there. And did we get a second one? Nope. Okay. So we did establish in the last video that you can get two of them in a pack. It's uh, not common. I think it was only one pack in the last box where I uh, managed to get two. But, uh, you know, it's okay. Uh, more I get of them, the better. And uh, I can't wait to open the collector's box where I'm going to get a whole bunch more. All right, so behind the Scoured Barons. Oh, there's a foil rare, and it's an Everquill Phoenix. I like the, the new design they're using for Phoenixes where uh, you, get, you can return them uh, by a, um, a token that enters the battlefield when it dies. You could use that to, uh, to bring it back. And in this case, uh, it's when the creature mutates, you get the token that, so that you can bring it back. Um, I like that. I think it's better than just returning it from the graveyard. Um, but, uh, you know, it's still a pain. Oh, there's Lurus. I was talking about him, and look what happens. Here comes our uh, free Black Lotus guy. Yay, free Black Lotus guy. And Auspicious Starix. Very, very nice. Very, very nice. I mean, like the is it the shading or something with the with the coloring? But it almost like in a sense, it almost looks like translucent, like it w or like it would be translucent if it were you know real. Which I mean, it's not, but you know, because <laughs> that's uh that's when the first time I saw it, I was like, wow, was like, it looks like really nice, you know. And like I said, I really really love this uh, the uh, alternate artworks in this, and I wish we could add more cards like that. Uh, and have them be regular cards instead of just, you know, uh, these uh, little special things they throw in every once in a while. I think uh, I think we, Magic should uh, start getting a little more creative and a little more uh, regular with this uh, sort of altered uh, frame stuff like this. Make more of them, you know. They're, they're really, really nice. And, you know, to just have a couple here and there, they should do more of it. I mean, why don't they do that with the basic lands? I mean... They don't have to, you know, do, like, fancy stuff all the time. It doesn't have to be, like, the um, the uh, unstable lands. But uh, even if just, you know, you have the black border like this, where you have the black border, but it's full art across the card. I mean, come on, do that for basic lands, not this. Come on. It's a joke. This is, uh, you know, 27 years. Let's uh, update this a little bit, you know? And we got another Slither Wisp. All right. Um, I guess it's nice to be playing a lot of stuff with Flash, but uh, if you're not... Not really helping. All right. We have here anything cool? 
Oh, Dreamtail Heron right at the back. Very nice. Very nice. That crazy, crazy elemental bird. Yeah. Okay. Noticing with these packs, it's a little bit better if I uh, sort of squeeze the cards down. They seem to be kind of uneven in the packs. Um, by the way, interesting thing going on with the box toppers. Uh, you know, people should, uh, you know, uh, realize uh, a lot of people, I've been seeing a couple of people who have uh, opened box toppers, and the box toppers are bent badly. Uh, but, like, bent like uh, a foil crustacean, but bent like this way, you know? Like, like this, like they were, like they kind of got loose and shook around in the box and got bent on the sides uh, through, um, through transit. And I feel bad for people who, who got that, because, I, I mean, I don't know if wizards can really, you know, like, replace something like that, you know? Uh, it's, it's tricky because it's not really their fault. I mean, you know, sometimes it happens when uh, things shake around. Oh, there's another Karuga. There is another Karuga. Okay, so Karuga number two. Fine, whatevs. But, uh, yeah, so, so don't be surprised. Be, be very gentle with these boxes because apparently these, um, days and following. Uh, apparently these boxes were, um, you know, these box toppers are floating around in the top kind of randomly. Uh, so, you know, try to keep them relatively stable. Uh, so this way you don't end up like that. Because I want, you know, one person I saw opened um, the uh, Space Godzilla, which, uh, as you know, was very valuable at one point. But now it's uh, kind of gone down since there's a fair amount of them out there. Uh, but I saw it happen to one of the mythic ones. And that must have been really disappointing. I was I, I was soured looking at the picture on Twitter earlier. Uh, Red Wild Rider on Twitter, by the way, all one word. I follow there. I usually let people know when videos are posting and when uh, uh, live things are going on. Uh, I'm a, sometimes uh, you know very late with the links to those things, but you know I always hit, shoot the links off before the uh, live thing actually starts. Just sometimes only a few minutes before. But if I, if I say I'm going on at, like, a certain time, I'm going to be going on at that time. And if I'm not, I'll be posting it on Twitter. So be aware. So Mythos and Nethroy out of that pack. Very nice. I think we had one of those in the last box as well. Uh, it's a pretty decent card. Looking forward to uh, potentially playing it. I don't have an Abzan deck yet. I'm actually trying right now. Uh, I'm working on building uh, one deck for every color combination, including monocolors. Uh, which is funny because I have two green decks already and I'm you know just going to keep them because one's elves and one's druids and uh, why not? Uh, I like them, so I'm going to keep those. But I'm trying to build one for every color combination, but I don't have Abzan yet. So Dismal Backwater, and behind that is a Foil Ivy Elemental. It's very nice. I love the fact that Ivy Elemental is in this set with Mutate because of the counters. There's not a lot of plus one, plus one counters from what I've seen. There's a lot of other counters, but not a hell of a lot of plus one, plus one. So to have a card like Ivy Elemental where you, you can uh, play it for, say, like, you know, X equals three or something, and the next turn, like, mutate something on, on top of it, uh, it the, those counters are going to carry over, obviously, so uh, it's uh, certainly uh, beneficial. Behind that is a Dirge Bat. Hey, Dirge Bat number three <laughs> between the two boxes. Okay, okay. Regular Ivy Elemental in the pack. Hey, look at that wonderful, wonderful collation. Okay, but... um. And I love the Fertilid reprint, too. I think the Fertilid reprint's pretty funny. I used to play Fertilid in a lot of my Commander decks, and, you know, over over time as I, you know, improved my card collection some, I kind of got away from playing Fertilid. But uh, it's, a, it's a pretty nice card. It's a good card to have in, uh, in draft as well, especially in a format like this where you uh, are going to need to splash a third color at minimum. Okay. Uh, Kogla. Okay, we've uh, seen Kogla in the previous box. Uh, that's not bad. Another Archipelagor. Still love saying Archipelagor. Archipelagor. <laughs> uh, I have way too much fun doing this. That's why I do these box opening videos. I, I, you know, I love, I've watched box opening videos for years before I started doing my own. And originally, I st when I first started doing them, I was doing them exclusively on Facebook. So there's a bunch on Facebook, including my very disappointing, <laughs> my first video was a very disappointing Dominaria box opening where I opened the booster box and um a bundle and got two mythics i mean one of them was corn but i got two mythics you know it was it was really weird and i didn't open the first one until i was almost until i opened the bundle and then all the way through the um uh until i got to the last column of uh boosters in the box 
So I was I was flipping out the whole video, like, oh my god, where's my mythics? Another ruinous ultimatum, right on, right on, very good. I said earlier that I think it's one of the better ultimatums in the set. Uh, there's always going to be good ones and bad ones. I just hope I don't get another one of those bad ones. Because <laughs> uh, uh, not for nothing, I don't see myself ever playing uh, the, uh, what is it, Inspired Ultimatum? The, the red, white, blue one? Like, it just, it doesn't excite me the way that, uh, that some of these other ones do. Okay. Ah, foil Mountain, and then Foil Mountain right behind it. And that's, uh, that's a pretty nice uh, Foil Mountain there. Not bad. I was, it's not the Swamp I opened in the last box. Swamp I opened in the last box was hot. Oh, my God. It was so good. What's behind the mountain? It is a Sea Dasher Octopus in full art mode. Right on. I like it. I like it. I like it. It's very good. Okay, uh, <laughs> I'll stop being silly now. No, that's not going to happen. I'm not going to stop being silly ever. Who am I kidding? Uh, if I wasn't silly, I wouldn't be me. So, this set, uh, I, I really do think companions are overpowered. I've uh, made a number of comments on Twitter regarding uh, how ju just how OP I think they are. Because it does, uh, in some regard, the fact that you don't have a way to interact with companions... Um, until a player decides to cast his companion, uh, is significant. It's it's card advantage. It's guaranteed card advantage, which is even worse. Uh, if you don't play one, you're basically handicapping yourself. You know, you're uh, taking an arrow to the knee for uh, no reason whatsoever. <laughs> you know, uh, against somebody who's playing one. I mean, obviously, if both of you aren't playing one, then you're you're on even ground. Oh hotness the foil parcel beast i was hoping i got one of these somewhere along the line and i got one here oh that is that is so nice that's so nicey nicey one thing i'm gonna say about these i i've seen collector's box videos and um put that up there uh mythos of uh, luna i've seen some of the collector's box videos and i know you get like one foil of the comic book style art uh in each pack uh, I have to say that uh, this is a much better setup than they had in the Theros boxes where you could potentially get uh, either one of the five uncommon um, the uh, one of the five uncommon enchantment creatures or you could get one of the five gods. Uh, there was so much duplication in those spots it was it was hor horrible uh, whereas now, you uh in the in that spot you, there's so much variety there's actually a lot of variety in the collector's boosters and i i've watched like i said i've watched maybe about like 15 or 20 collector's box videos and i'll tell you like every one is a trip like every one something different happens like when, when you get the regular non-foil ones of the uncommons and commons yeah i mean those are going to repeat a bunch but the um the uh the rare spots there's so much variety in them. What's behind the planes? It is Offspring's Revenge. At the beginning of your combat on your turn, exile target, red, white, or black creature. Card from your graveyard. Oh, it's the one that makes the 1-1. One, one. I don't like this. I do not like this. Except it's a 1-1. One, one. If, if it didn't have except it's a 1-1, one, one, then it would be much, much better. Like, it, it could have been except it's a 2-2 you know, two, two or something like that. But a 1-1, one, one, I'm, I'm not a fan. I'll say it here and now. I am not a fan. And it's five mana. Uh, which, you know, for five mana, bringing back a 1-1. Nah. Unless you're getting some really good value out of it. You have to be getting amazing value. So we have a trumpeting nard here. Um, I really should just move through these cards real fast. Oh, you see? There, there we go. We got two. I told you it was going to happen. Probably this is the one per box, I guess. But uh, there we go. Okay. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, I, I couldn't see playing that card in any format whatsoever. I guess I guess maybe in draft it's okay. I guess maybe if you if you really have a lot of ETB stuff it's okay. But uh, I don't know how much ETB stuff you really want to be doing with Offspring's Revenge. You know? Uh, I don't know how much you really want to use it. I mean, really. I mean, even if you have a lot of ETB stuff, I mean, it's wasting a turn, basically. Oh, there's another Yori on for me. Show, show enough. Show enough. And uh, nothing else in the back. All right, move on to the next one. Ding. And rip. You know, 
I, I catch myself sometimes about to say like catch lines from other YouTube box openers. Like I almost said Riffy Riffy and no, that, that, no. <laughs> no, all right, we got a Zagoth Triome. I don't, I'm not sure if I got a Zagoth Triome in the last box. Like I said, I haven't really checked yet. I'm going to compile all my stuff uh, uh, from the boxes when I'm done with this video. Uh, so I'm not 100% sure, but I think at this point I now have at least one of every Triome. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I know I opened a Savitram. I know I opened a Ketria one. Uh, these names are still killing me. I gotta, I gotta get them into my head. Um, I would say they're odd, but I mean, Abzan, Jeskai, and etc. were all odd. Grixis and Jund and whatever. They're all odd, so I don't know. Mythos of Vadrock. This was the one Mythos that I didn't get in the previous box. I was f four for five on the Mythos. Uh, oh, and look at that. Totally, totally should have shut the sound off on my phone. All right. Anyway, what's in here? Nothing uh, spectacular, nothing special. Just keep opening the packs, my friend. You know, I wish I, wish I could have done this 10 years ago when I was, uh, I would, you know, sit at my friend's house and just bust through an entire case in like about an hour and you know he's just sitting around talking porky parrot it's the porky parrot look at you you crazy thing you oh my god would you shush up phone yeesh oh dranith magistrate finally got one of these boys i know i'm going to be using him in a lot of decks because uh hate 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 tax 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 do not do these things I do not want you to do. That's how I play magic. <laughs> do not do the things you want to do because I do not want you to do them. Which reminds me, oh my God, I need a Nozolith. I really need to open a Nozolith because that's uh, absolutely my Atraxa deck. My Atraxa deck is all plus one, plus one counters uh, based around that. And there's actually a bunch of cards I need from uh, Ikoria for that, including Brakos and Nethroy, and I haven't seen either of them yet either, which is uh, rather disappointing, but uh, I'm sure I'll get there. So we have our little token sheet, which I'm, I'm glad they brought this kind of thing back, and I think this is something, first of all, I think the counters for keyword abilities, I think that's something that should go on in the future and not just go away after the set, but I think they should offer more stuff like this, more of these like little punch-out cards uh, to give you little uh, ex extra stuff that you need for games. And they, sh I, they sh maybe should even try to make them more common. Maybe give like a, a good stack of them to the LGSs. Obosh! First Obosh in my uh, boxes here. Very nice. I like Obosh. I'm probably going to find a spot for him somewhere uh, in one of my commander decks, even if he's not a companion. Uh, just because, you know, dealing double damage is always, always recommended and welcomed. I will happily deal more damage than I'm supposed to. Not a problem. Seems all right. So I have I opened in the last box one Planeswalker and one Apex. And uh, hopefully I can uh, squeeze out a couple more of those guys too. Uh, there's a Gigantha. I don't think I opened uh, Gigantha in the last box, so now I got one. Very nice. Uh, it is uh, our Elemental Elk. What is it with Magic and Elks lately? I mean, what is, is, is Oko going to show up? I mean, what's what's the deal, yo? What What is the deal with that? Uh, nothing in the comments. Okay. Still hunting out those comic booky kind of uh, cards there. You know, you know me. I'm crazy for crazy stuff because uh, why not? Magic Swan was supposed to have fun doing this, right? Right. Right, right. It's all right. It's all right. Pyro Ceratops. <laughs> uh, if my dinosaur deck was less dinosaur-y and more non-creature spell-y, I would definitely put this in my dinosaur deck. But uh, the only cards from this that made it into my dinosaur deck are Quartz of Crasher, which I opened last pack, uh, last box, and uh, Yidoro, which I haven't opened yet at all. And there's no Yidoro back there. It is just AC Dash or Octopus, which is perfectly fine. So I think this is uh, still one of the higher uh, valued rares. I... Uh, There'll probably be prices flashing on the screen because that was one of the things I intended to do with the editing process. Uh, Pouncing Shore Shark, roar. Um, but uh, I remember uh, yesterday when I was looking at it, like I said, uh, preparing for the video, I was uh, I spent some time looking at the prices of things. I was I was watching the prices like totally uh, dip down over the course of yesterday afternoon. It was really weird. Like 
at one point, I think when I first started looking at the prices, uh, the most expensive Triome was going for around like 12 or, 12 or 13 or so. And within like two hours, it was down to around 11. So, I mean, there was a huge uh, change in the price. Oh, another Mythic. It's not one of the great ones, but it's uh, still a Mythic, and it's uh, Shovel, Bane of Monsters. I, I don't like this. I think the ability is just way too limited. I think you should be able to put more bounty counters on things. If your opponents control no permanence with bounty counters on them, you get one. And then you got to sit around and wait for the thing to go to the graveyard. Nah, I'm not a fan. Not a fan. Not a fan. It should be for each opponent, and then we'd be talking, but not not in that state. No, that's that's not that's just kind of weak, you know. Especially for a mythic. I mean, I mean, th and this is my point about mythics. Like mythics should feel mythic, and that does not feel mythic. That feels blunt. It feels like an uncommon, you know. If we were able to do like multiple. Uh, bounty counters like give each your opponent something with a bounty counter on it make them all sweat a little bit you know you don't even have to do it all in one turn like you can stretch it out over turns but let more happen that's that's not a mythic that's that's blah you know especially i mean i mean all right you, you somebody can make the argument oh, well in draft it's probably uh, it maybe may a little heavy but you're still only playing as one opponent in draft it doesn't really matter if you suddenly expand it out to a second opponent or something like that like why not why not? Sp Shiny Island here? I like little ice spikes. Is that ice spikes? Looks like ice spikes. Or crystal spikes. I don't know. And behind it is Umori the Collector. This was another uh, companion I did not get in the previous uh, box. Very nice. Uh, filling out those collector, those uh, companion spots. Okay. Uh, not bad. Not bad. One of the other things with companions, by the way, is like I feel like the restrictions in a lot of cases just really aren't restrictive enough. Like... It, it's, you know, even like odd spells and even spells, it's easy to build around that, you know. Even, you know, put 20 extra cards in your deck. Well, you, it's in white blue and you're saying to white blue put 20 extra cards in your deck. It's like, oh, so I don't have to deck myself out when I just spend a lot of time drawing cards all day long. Like, seems all right. Snap decks. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's the, that's the apex I got in the last box. Oh, come on. <laughs> Come on! I need Brakos. I need Nethroy. Snapdaxes? Uh, watch I open four Snapdaxes between all my stuff and like none of the other four. I'm gonna like lose it. You, you'll just the progression over days of of watching these videos that I'm doing. You're gonna see if I keep opening Snapdaxes and not any of the other guys. I'm gonna flip. <laughs> I'm certainly gonna lose it at some point <laughs> in one of my videos. Like, are you kidding? I'm gonna start throwing Snapdaxes against the wall. <laughs> Maybe knock the camera over or something. I don't want to knock the camera over now, but, but maybe later. But I'm really hoping I get a Brockos or a Nethroy because, like I said, I'm I'm planning on playing both of those, so it'd be nice. Uh, behind the bad land, it is a Genesis Ultimatum. I think it's the only Ultimatum I didn't get in the last box, so now uh, full on on Ultimatums as well. Congratulations! Woohoo! Wow, my voice just cracked. Uh. Another Regal Leosaur. I remember uh, I got this, I think, towards the end of the last video, and I commented that it's really nice, and uh, still is really nice. Dinosaur Cat. Dino Cat! Look at me, I'm a Dino Cat. All right, heading into the home stretch here. Yeah, let's see what's in this bad boy. Come on, Ozolith, or one, come on, one of the cards I need. Please, 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 please. Solid footing behind the solid footing is... Not a card I needed. Not a card I'm a huge fan of. Although it does say Exile, uh, Extinction Event. You choose Odd or Even and then uh, Exile each con uh, creature with Convert a Mana Cost to the Chosen Value. Eh, the Exile part makes it less bad, but it's still only killing half the stuff. So, I want to kill all the stuff. Not half the stuff. All the stuff. All of it must die. Everything goes away. Not half of it. And for four mana, I could play Damnation. For three mana and some life, I could play Toxic Deluge. Why that? Labyrinth Raptor did not get this in the last um, in the last box. Not a bad card. Not an amazing card, but not a bad one. Labyrinth Raptor. Uh, eh, you can give creatures you control with menace plus one plus zero until end of turn. Seems nice. Uh, I'm sure there will be some applications for it at some point. Um... 
but it's it's very build around the end. I I get I get nervous about playing build around cards because then if you don't draw the right things and all of a sudden you know building around them didn't really do any good. The Vulpa Keep about to eat a bee. No, don't eat the bee. Bees sting you. Bees will sting you. They will hurt. They will hurt with muchness. What else do we have in here? Let's see. Next pack. Next pack. Oh, behind the throne with false. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. It's the sexy Broncos. Not the normal Broncos, the sexy Broncos. Yay! Woohoo! My nightmare beast elemental that's gonna come back from the graveyard and uh jump onto all my creatures and mutate them. Yes! Yes, Brocky! Yes, Brocky! Yes, I, I've already nicknamed him Brocky. I think I nicknamed him Brocky from the day they revealed him. <laughs> but I'm glad I got it. All right, one down, two more cards to go that I really would like to open in all this. Come on, give me an Ozolith. I need an Ozolith. Oh, garbs, garbs, garbs. And General Kudro, there's another Mythic. Uh, that is one and a two and a three and a four and a five. Five Mythic box, yes. Yes, ha, ha, ha. All right, so we're a little bit above the average. Another Cloud Piercer. Very cool, very, very cool. And I still have one, two, three, four, five packs left. Okay, only two Triomes this box. Wow. All right, interesting. Oh, boy. All right, uh, Dinosaur Beast and Dismal Backwater. And, well, my first classification. I knew I was going to get one eventually with the giant-ass cat. Hey. Focus. Focus, camera. You want to. Yes, you do. All right. You focused. Plus 20, plus 20. Seems like a good thing to play with fling. I saw somebody doing that on YouTube and I was cracking up laughing. Oh, that's the common file. Please do not put there. Okay. Otherwise, it's going to screw me up later when I'm counting out cards. All right. Uh, four more. Ding. Let's see what we got here. What's in this pack? It is Foil Polywog Symbiote, and behind the little froggy froggy is a Ketria Triome. Okay, we're opening more Triomes. That's what we're supposed to be doing. We'll love to get another full art one, but uh, I'll take my one for the box. Oh, we can just put that down there. The regular rare. There's the regular Archipelago. I won't do it this time. I promise. Archipelago. Yeah, I'm not good with promises. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nah <laughs> well not when it comes to stuff like that I can't help myself I love this game Find the Cliffs is a Skycat Sovereign another one that I didn't get oh yes does nice things with things with flying seems uh, seems pretty good hmm interesting interesting hmm hmm I wonder if uh yeah, Brago could probably use something like that. I don't think it's mandatory, though. I don't think it's something I'm going to be rushing to find a spot for in Brago. Yes, I have a Brago deck. That's my Azorius deck. It's Brago, because why not? I mean, listen, yeah, so I, I have some fun decks. You know, I've got, like, my, my Karthus Dragons deck and stuff like that. But I play a pretty mean Brago deck. I, play, I have a pretty mean Azami deck. You know, Pramacon's pretty nutty. I'm, I'm, a, I'm such a degenerate blue player, and I make no bones about it ever. Very degenerate blue player. Oh, there's the feather token. That's really pretty. I would love to. I hope that this is a foil in my collector's box because that is that's got to look beautiful in foil. That has to look beautiful in foil. Oh my god, that's so nice. You know, something I want. I want to see something. Is is it a red token? Yeah, it is. Wow. All right. That's pretty cool. Okay. And get a row. Yes, 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 got him, got him, slides right into the dinosaur deck. I don't think I'm ever going to cycle him uh, four times to, to cast him that way, but that's okay. I'll cycle him once or twice, and then I'll cast him. That's fine. That works. He's trampoly hasty. That's perfectly fine. Yeah, da da All right, what do we have? Anything fancy? No, nothing fancy. Last pack. Uh, uh, last pack. We'll do the last pack, and then we'll do the box topper. Uh, I hope it's not another baby Godzilla. Of course, now that I said that, y'all know it's going to happen. Y'all know it. Y'all know there's going to be another baby Godz Godzuki in there. 
And Zerd of the Dawn Waker. Hey, it's another companion that I did not open. All right. All right. Not bad. It could be an interesting... Um, hmm. I just noticed that it doesn't affect its uh, its own ability. Eh, whatever. Okay, Zerd of the Dawn Waker. Show enough. Uh, anything fancy in here? Nah, probably not. Nope. Okay. Box stopper time. Please no Godzuki. Please no baby Godzuki. I do not want another one. And I'm opening this this way. I know I know there's a little pull thing. I was gonna do it and I said, nah, if I do that, then I'm gonna end up seeing what the card is. And I don't want I wanna save the surprise because I'm hoping it's something good this time. Please let it be something good, please let it be something good, please let it be something good. Ah! It is it's Yidero! <laughs> it's Godzilla Doom Inevitable masquerading as Yidero. Alright! Yeah! Very nice. Very nice. Alright, so that is box topper number two. That is video number two. That is box number two. We are out. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you're all staying safe. I hope you're all well. And uh, please uh, subscribe hit the like button, hit the uh, the bell thing, and all the other youtube -y kind of stuff that y'all do out there. This is Red Wild Rider, signing off. Peace. I'm out.